Turned out, she was a sugar baby. She told me she was figuring out a solution to get rid of him, but for now, there was no other way than for me to accept it, and that she wouldn't see him in person as we were together. It said, I need you to come to the clinic. I was scared. I thought she had been in a wreck or something like that. But when I got off work and went to the clinic, found out she was infected with What's going on everybody? Hope everybody's feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well. We are back with another subscriber email story. Guys, if you want to send in your story, send it to true story nation at gmail.com. Here I'll put it on the screen. That's true story nation at gmail.com. Whether it's a funny story, a story where you went through something and you came out the victor, you became successful. Um, if you just want to teach people how to become successful, I have an upcoming email i want to read to you guys where a guy is he wants to teach everybody how he became successful uh through stocks um not something i'm too familiar with so i thought it was interesting and hopefully you guys will find that interesting too if you want to send in your story just send it to that email all right you guys read the title so let's get into it the subject crazy but beautiful hmm hi true nation hope you are feeling good Hope you are doing well. Also, hope you do my story. Everybody close to me at the time said it was totally crazy, but entertaining, and I think you'd enjoy it too. You can call me Mirza. To start off, thank you for doing this and opening people's eyes. I discovered your channel a few months ago after my last relationship ended. These stories have made me deal with it and see that it's just woman's nature and I shouldn't be disappointed or angry at the specific person. This knowledge, I know now how to enter future relationships. Anyway, this story is not about my ex. This story is about my first real love when I was about 19. At that time, she was already 34. A very beautiful girl, skinny with fake boobs, just before hitting the wall, looks wise. The wall would eventually play a big part in a relationship, and I am so happy I didn't get caught. I am so happy I didn't get caught by her. Now looking back after all these years. At 19 I had a few girlfriends before her. But they were sweet girls. And apparently I wanted some more excitement. Well I got it. We met of course in a club. My friend was already talking to a group of girls. And when me and her laid eyes on each other. We were instantly attracted. We danced the whole night. Very sensual. And I must admit we got pretty drunk. When the night ended and we were waiting for a taxi, she dragged me with her. Her friends were trying to stop her, but she said, no, I am taking him home. After staying there, I took a cab home late in the morning. That's where I noticed the first red flag. When I was about to go, she started almost crying and asking if I was going to call her back. I said yes, and she just kept saying, no, you won't. Well, I did call her and invited her to my home. We drank and we drank. She had more than two bottles of wine and I had so many beers and glasses of vodka. I couldn't even count them anymore. When we went to bed, we tried to have sex, but I was at the point of throwing up and just stopped. Then came the second red flag. When I stopped and said, let's just go to sleep, she started crying and started asking me if I wasn't attracted to her. I said, no, it's just the alcohol. And I let her cry by herself and I went to sleep, but I made it up in the morning. Then things started to go pretty fast. I had a good job in a nice apartment in the center of the city. So I took her to all kinds of places and restaurants, of course paying for everything. Within a few months, I fell deeply in love and we were staying together all the time. That's when I started to notice things that were not okay. Because we were together all the time, I noticed she didn't work at all. She always told me she had some real estate she rented out and could live off that. When I started to stay at her house, she couldn't hide it anymore because she got called regularly. Turned out, she was a sugar baby. The guy was an older businessman, I don't know the exact situation, probably married with kids, but wanted a pretty girl he could go visit when he wanted. 
Every month, he gave her enough money to pay the bills and live on. I was very naive and deeply in love. She told me she just saw him twice a year and nothing really happens. He was calling her almost every night to check what she was doing, with me sitting right there. She told me she was figuring out a solution to get rid of him, but for now, there was no other way than for me to accept it and that she wouldn't see him in person as we were together. Even introducing me to her family, in the meantime manipulating me by saying how she rejected an offer to have a holiday on an exclusive and expensive island all for me. Trying to make me think she sacrificed so much for me and telling me I should start showing her more commitment by giving her a baby. As time went on, it was clear that her solution was instead of getting a job or doing something herself, she wanted someone to replace the gravy train, which was me. When we were together about six months, she started pushing me and trying to hook me in. We were already not having protected sex, but now she wanted me to unload inside of her. I wouldn't do it, and we started having fights about how in her mind I was irresponsible, not wanting to commit all manipulation. In the meantime, more red flags of her mental instability came up which I ignored, like how she was taken advantage of when she was young by some guy. She came from a single parent household. She had an abortion, which she still regrets, and even showed me a picture of her ex telling me how beautiful he was. One time we were having sex and the phone went off, which was her sugar daddy. Right after the phone started making sounds, instead of getting stressed, she started to have an orgasm. Obviously, she got some kick out of knowing who was calling, and at the same time, doing it with me. The moment came when I slowly, but still not completely, started to open my eyes. That is when I discovered messages directed to a third guy. The messages in her explanations were pretty funny. He was telling her that he had a huge D, and most girls couldn't take it. She said then he should find a girl with big hips. But instead of shutting it down, the conversation kept going in a more friendly way. But still, I could see she loved the attention. To me, she tried to explain it by saying she was just giving a friend medical advice since she was studying to become a nurse. Wow. Now imagine she already had two guys, the business guy and me, who she was trying to get pregnant by. And that wasn't enough. Still keep on talking and wanting attention from even more guys. Mm -hmm. More, more, more. And on one day it exploded. I was still deeply in love and was maybe even seeing a future in spite of everything. Love makes you sometime an idiot, especially when you're young. It all happened because the business guy she promised she would not see came over for the weekend. What? What? She said they were just going to a few restaurants together and they would sleep apart and that I shouldn't call her. I was so stressed that weekend because deep down I knew this wasn't the case. Right after he left, she called me to come over and we had sex. Learning later, she already slept with him that same day. Wow. You knew this, man. I know you knew this. And then one day, a week later, I just had to know the truth. So I called him up to find out. I got the number by looking in her phone. Of course, he confirmed she slept with him multiple times, also without protection. Mm. Thinking back, I still feel bad of making that call and the trouble it caused everyone involved. I should have just left way before getting to this point, but being 19 and for the first time really in love, I was blind. On the other hand, she wasn't only playing us both emotionally, but also playing with our help. Yep. Absolutely. After that, he stopped giving her money. She became desperate because it was her only income and had no savings. I am not exaggerating. She was calling me so many times, my phone wouldn't stop buzzing for hours. When she noticed I wasn't going to pick up, I literally started receiving about 60 to 80 text messages a day for almost a week. By now, she made a choice knowing I wasn't a viable option anymore. She decided to play the victim to the other guy. So he would start giving her money again. She accused me of forcing myself on her, taking advantage of her, telling me the business guy will make sure with all of his money that I would go to jail and end up in hell. I spoke one more time with the guy because he called me wanting to know what exactly happened. And I explained the situation, that all the accusations were false and to tell her to stop stalking me. The conversation was civil, 
and we understood we both got tricked. After I saw her one more time, when she waited in front of my building, I don't know for how long, when I finally came out, she said she wanted to talk. Because of everything that happened with the false accusations, blaming me for destroying her life and her obvious mental breakdown, I was careful. Telling her to show her hands and open her bags, plus staying in the view of the security camera so the meeting was recorded in case she made up any more stories. Smart man. She was that unstable and crazy. I thought her capable of doing anything. In the news here, for instance, there are quite a lot of instances of people throwing acid. Hmm. I can't remember the details of the conversation, but at one point she was asking me if I had already slept with another girl since we broke off. I said yes, which wasn't true, and she started crying. This was the last contact. It took me a long time to get over her, but now looking back, I can laugh about it, realizing how stupid and naive I was. Hopefully this helps others seeing these kinds of red flags. For me, luckily it ended only with a broken heart. But these false accusations can get you in serious trouble. I think she never pushed through with it since no police contacted me. But in case, I was ready and recorded all the phone calls that I did have with her. Voicemails, text messages for my own protection. And one of them said, you destroyed my life, meaning her income. So I will destroy yours by telling the police you took advantage of me. And they will believe me because I am a woman. Let that be a tip to others to record everything when it goes sour for your safety. In their emotion, they will always tell on themselves, contradict their lies, which will prove your innocence in case it does get serious. In the end, I am happy for the experience. It was an emotional roller coaster and I learned a lot. Seeing now right away when someone is toxic and appreciating the sweet girls with a good heart, which I didn't when I was younger. Good luck everybody and keep up the work true nation. Wow. Let me give my thoughts. I'm glad you're able to look back and laugh about it too and and realize how silly you were and everything because like you said, she was toxic in so many ways. So she had this guy come over on the weekend convinced you that they weren't going to do anything they were going to sleep in separate beds they were just going to play uno monopoly or whatever and not do anything come on i knew i know you knew i know you knew but that lust you use the word love like you were in love with her it was lust man you thought she was hot she was smoking hot you wanted her you enjoyed the sex and she convinced you to come over and have unprotected sex with her after she just had unprotected sex with this old guy. Oh, man. She doesn't care about her life. She damn sure does not care about anybody else's life. So luckily, I'm glad you made it out STD free, hopefully, too. And you, you say you're able to look back now and laugh at it and say, man, how stupid I was. So it makes me think that you're doing good. Um, wow. She could have ruined your entire life. If you would have had a if you would have had a baby with her. She would have ruined your entire life. She would have taken you to the cleaners. She would have taken everything from you. Man, you definitely ignored a lot of red flags. But listen, the great thing about this story, and I love these types of stories. You said you were naive. You were a simp, whatever it was back then. You were young. You're not like that anymore. You move accordingly now. You move correctly now. You you know you know not to put your life in jeopardy your your finances in jeopardy so salute to you i'm glad you sent this story hopefully you know some young person is probably listening to this and they're going through the same exact situation and it's going to help them it's going to help them so thanks for sending in the story guys let me know what you think about email one and we're going to go ahead and check out another email all right guys we're back with the second email let's go ahead and get into it so the subject is my girlfriend surprised me with two STDs from five guys. He starts off with, Hey there, True Nation. I've been watching your videos and it's been blessing. It's been a blessing to me. It showed me that maybe my story could help someone else on your channel. Well, my name is Jesse. Please have patience with my spelling. I do have dyslexia. Wow, we just, <laughs> we did just, uh, read a story with someone who had dyslexia so it's fine i'll get through it don't worry about it 
but I don't think it's a good excuse to let my story help others. So here we go. I was 23 and I had just moved to Linder, Texas with my parents. I had met this girl through this church I got volunteered to help with by my grandmother. Let's call her Becca and she was 24. And what a surprise she's and what a surprise she's the granddaughter of the head pastor and the daughter of the head of the worship pastor. But we were together for a bit over a year and things are going great. We would go out, have cute dates, go to a bar almost every week and go dancing. Heck, she taught me how to dance. This was my first relationship. I thought it was going great. Completely blinded by puppy love. Completely blinded by puppy love. I've been working in the welding field and was making okay money. Life was all good. To be honest, was the best time of my life. But I had a real reality check coming my way. And I didn't even know it was going to flip my world upside down. Becca, she worked as a receptionist for a karate place. As the relationship went on, we didn't fight or argue. It was pretty cool. Her parents liked me a bit. Quite often, Jeff would call me to help him with all kinds of things around their house and other things. There were even times Jeff would make jokes and nudging towards grandchildren. And we weren't even engaged yet. But I was saving for a ring, so I would be able to ask for her hand. It was just kind of odd, because I haven't told anyone else that I was saving for it. But I was now planning on asking her. But I started to notice she was spending a lot of time with her friends. But when she would go over there or girls night outs, she'd have little marks around her neck and she would try to hide them with her foundation. But I could see the lines and she wouldn't want to be with me. Huh. But I didn't know the signs then. I look back now and as I write this email, God, I was blind. But I was working one Friday and I ended up getting a text from Becca saying, Hey, baby, I need you to do something for me. Well, I was thinking maybe she wants me to get something on my way to her house. I was already on my way there and the Walmart was on the way. But I replied, hey, hon, what's up? Need me to grab anything? Simple reply. But I wasn't ready for the next text. It said, I need you to come to the clinic. I was scared. I thought she had been in a wreck or something like that. But when I got off work and went to the clinic, found out she was infected with chlamydia and gonorrhea and she handed me a note telling me that I should go in and get tested. She tested positive for them and she didn't know who she had gotten it from. I can't explain how hard my heart dropped. I felt like I was going to throw up so I had to experience my first STD test. They gave me a couple shots. I felt like I am in a movie. Really didn't feel real. I felt dirty. I don't know how else I don't know how else to explain that feeling. I called Jeff, her dad, and I dropped off her stuff, and I said my goodbyes to Jeff, and I shook his hand. He said he was sorry about us not working out. I could tell he was pretty sad. I know he liked me, and now this is why I hate Facebook. Becca is still in contact with my aunts and cousins, and I hear an earful about how her life is going, and life updates. I'm 25 now, and I've just gotten done moving across the country. And I've unfortunately have had to stop talking to those parts of my family. Had to stop talking to that part of my family just so I can try to start a new life. Thank you for your time in reading this. I've never been able to get this off my chest. If it's on your channel, I'll be honest, I'd probably have a smile on my face for a while. I know someone out there has the same things going on. We all need to be able to learn from our mistakes. And if you are wise, you'll learn from the mistakes of others. If you've been cheated on, please talk to someone. If you let it, it'll eat you alive. Thank you again, sir. Your videos help heal. I can say that. Thanks. Wow. Let me get my thoughts. Wow, man. So the email before this, this that guy made it out perfectly fine. You know, she put him at risk. He made it out fine. This guy, on the other hand, had to deal with having gonorrhea and chlamydia. That's very unfortunate. This girl was putting you at risk. Church girl. She's supposed to be, I don't know what religion or whatever, but church girl, she's supposed to be a nice, innocent girl doing good things or whatever. You thought she was going to, she was a respectful girl. She was probably nice and sweet. And she gives you two STDs. Wow. She's coming home with hickeys on her neck or you're going to her house and you're seeing her with hickeys on her neck and all types of crap. Man. But... Luckily, they were curable STDs. 
So you made it out alive. You made it out great. And I hope that you're doing good now. Um, you said you were welding. That's awesome. That's a good career. That's a good field. So awesome. Salute to you for being a welder. But like you said, you were young and you were you, you referred to it as puppy love. You know, you were in love with this girl or or in lust. Probably maybe you found her very attractive. Whatever it was, you ignored red flags. You know, hickeys, huge red flag. You know, she's trying to cover it up. And uh, people on here are probably going to tell you girls night out red flag. I mean, people are going to say that in comments. I'm pretty sure. But, um, man, I'm just glad you made it out and you're doing good. So salute to you. Thanks for sending sending. Thanks for sending in this email. You are absolutely right. There's somebody going through it, the same exact thing. And they're going to hear this story and not make any mistakes, you know. So uh, salute to you, man. Guys, let me know what you think about email one and email two in the comments. Um, if you want to send in your story, send it to truestorynation at gmail.com. Here, I'll put it on the screen. That's truestorynation at gmail.com. And I will catch you guys at the next one.